Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about sodium nitroprusside. What is this drug sodium nitroprusside? This drug is one of the vasodilator which is acting peripherally and just like organic nitrates this drug can release nitric oxide which is going to produce vasodilatation. The released nitric oxide can act on the blood vessels to produce a vasodilatation which reduces the blood pressure. This drug can produce a vasodilatation of both arterioles as well as venules. Sodium nitroprusside is both arterial as well as venular vasodilator, but it is not used as conventional antihypertensives. This drug is restricted for emergency conditions, and particularly this drug is indicated in the conditions of hypertensive crisis where an excessive increase in the blood pressure can be reduced by sodium nitroprusside. Since this drug is used under emergency conditions, it is given by IV infusion. So today in this video we are going to discuss how this drug acts, what are the important precautions, side effects, doses, all these things we will discuss in this video. First of all, that is the chemical nature of this drug. So this is a simple structure of sodium nitroprusside. And here we can observe this group. This is nothing but the nitric oxide, which is going to be released from this sodium nitroprusside, leading to vasodilatation. Now let us see how this drug acts. Within the vascular smooth muscle, MLCK, myosin light chain kinases, play an important role. These enzymes are phosphorylating enzymes. They should be activated to MLCK activated form. And then they can act on the myosin light chains. By action on these myosin light chains, they can produce the phosphorylation so that myosin light chain phosphates can be formed. Now, in this phosphate form, MLC can bind with the actin so that it can produce actomyosin complex. This produces a contraction of vascular smooth muscle. Now, sodium nitroprusside can enter into the vascular smooth muscle where it is going to release the nitric oxide. Now, this nitric oxide can stimulate the gonadal cyclase system, which converts the GTP into one of the important secondary messenger, cyclic GMP. Then, cyclic GMP can produce a phosphorylation of MLCK such that it is converted into MLCK phosphate, which is the inactive form of this enzyme. Similarly, it can also inhibit the activation of MLCK. By these two actions, it can inhibit the contraction of the vascular smooth muscle. And it can also inhibit the entry of calcium. So by all of these actions, sodium nitroprusside can produce relaxation of the vascular smooth muscle. This reduces the blood pressure. That's why this drug is indicated in the conditions of hypertensive crisis. Now let us the precautions of sodium nitroprusside. Sodium nitroprusside is one of the vasodilator used under emergency conditions. So when this drug is given by IV infusion, it can reduce the blood pressure. So blood pressure can be suddenly fall. Now this reduction in the blood pressure may result in decreased perfusion pressure. So vital organs like heart, kidney and muscles are getting less blood supply so that their functionality is somewhat reduced. So this drug should be carefully given and any hypotension should be carefully monitored as it reduces the perfusion pressure to the vital organs. As we have seen the chemical structure, sodium nitroprusside is having the cyanide groups. So this drug can release the cyanide anions, which are going to be complexed by systemic buffers. Now buffers can act on the cyanide anions, which reduce the activity of cyanide ions. Under low dose, sodium nitroprusside releases low amount of cyanide ions, which are captured by systemic buffers. But when this drug is given at high infusion rate, then Cyanide ions are more released, which are not parallelly buffered, which results in the increased cyanide toxicity. So this is more important in the patients with any liver failure, where the cyanide toxicity is more increased, resulting in hypovolemia, anemia, and central side effects. Similarly, this drug on metabolism, it can release the thiocyanate anions. Again, thiocyanate can be accumulated within the body. When it is going to be accumulated up to 60 mg per liter, it can produce few of the conditions such as tinnitus, some buzzing noise in the ears, meiosis, 
pupillary constriction and hyperreflexia resulting in the increased muscle tone. All this can be observed with thiocyanate accumulation. Along with these symptoms, it may result in severe headache, nausea and vomiting. And at high dose of sodium nitroprusside, these thiocyanate molecules are more accumulated, so they can reach up to 200 mg per liter. In such conditions, sodium nitroprusside should be stopped in order to eliminate thiocyanate toxicity. Similarly, this drug can produce methemoglobinemia. Within the erythrocytes, hemoglobin is present, which can be alkylated so that it is going to be converted into methemoglobin. Now, oxygen can be easily carried by hemoglobin because oxygen can bind to these hemoglobin molecules, whereas the binding of oxygen to the methemoglobin is somewhat different. Oxygen can easily bind to the hemoglobin and it can be easily released. So, oxygen can be easily carried by hemoglobin. But in case of methemoglobin, oxygen strongly binds to the methemoglobin. Because of this strong binding, oxygen cannot be removed easily. So, it cannot be transported to the tissues. In this way, oxygen carrying capacity is somewhat reduced by erythrocytes due to methylation of hemoglobin. Similarly, this drug can also increase the hypovolemia as well as anemia and it can also increase the intracranial pressure. So, in the patients with already elevated intracranial pressure, this drug should be carefully given. What are the side effects? The important side effects of sodium nitroprusside mainly include hypotension, flushing, dizziness, headache, tachycardia, palpitations. It can produce some abdominal pain, skin rashes anemia, hypovolemia, irritation at site of injection and dia forces can be observed with this sodium nitroprusside. How it is given? This drug is given by IV infusion. Initially, it is given at low infusion rate such as 0.3 microgram per kg per minute and after 5 minutes, hypotension should be checked. If sufficient hypotension is not produced, then infusion rate can be increased so that the maximum infusion rate is 10 microgram per kg per minute. But during this infusion, a severe hypotension in the patient should be closely monitored, which reduce the perfusion pressure to the vital organs. So that's about this drug sodium nitroprusside, which is a both arterial as well as venular vasodilator, which peripherally acts to release the nitric oxide so that it produces vasodilatation. This drug is particularly used for the treatment of hypertensive crisis in cardiovascular complications. So that's about this drug nitroprusside. That's for today. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.